About a month ago, there was a list of exotics that were supposedly about to get updated. This was a leak, which of course you have to take with a grain of salt. And then Bungie, not less than a week ago, said that they're going to be changing, buffing, nerfing a handful of exotics, which more or less confirmed that the leaks that we saw are likely true, or at least in the ballpark. Nevertheless, I think that there's a bunch of exotics that still need some type of love. And most of this is backed by research from Destiny Tracker telling me what the least used exotic weapons are in PvP and PvE, which helped me inform my list. To start ourselves off, to make sure that you understand that there are definitely no biases here. The Mida Multi-Tool. I have about 25,000 kills of the Mida Multi-Tool in PvP. I absolutely love it, but as one of its biggest defenders, even I have to admit that it has a questionable use case in high-end PvP and high-end PvE does not necessarily mean to say that all exotics need to be viable at the highest level of play, but it should be at least able to scratch the surface, which I don't think that the Mida Multi-Tool currently can, at least not in PvE. I would, in a perfect world, love to see the Mida Multi-Tool really drive into the Multi-Tool idea. In particular, I think it would be neat if the Mida Multi-Tool could switch between damage types or weapon fire modes if you hit that alternate fire button. For example, if you hit the alt fire when you're in scout rifle mode, it would take you over to pulse, and then if you hit it again, it would take you over to an auto, allowing you to pick and choose what type of engagements you're about to get into while still maintaining its lightweight benefit, of which, technically speaking, in all three archetypes in the scout rifle, the pulse rifle, as well as the auto rifle, there are lightweight variants. The lightweight variant of an auto, by the way, is a green auto rifle. It's the only one to exist in the game. But barring that, what if the Mida Multi-Tool is capable of stunning all types of champions, assuming you kept it on a target for long enough or aimed down the sights for long enough? I understand that simply slapping anti-champions, especially all of the anti-champions theoretically on Mida, could be a bit strong, but hopefully you agree that it definitely deserves something. Sweet Business. Again, I love Sweet Business. Despite the memes, I think that Sweet Business is legitimately viable in PvP if you know what you're doing. I know that there are a lot of Sweet Business stands. I know that plenty of them are in my comment section right now. Don't worry, I see you. But let's give it a little bit more value in the PvE side of things. The first thought is to drive home the idea that the Sweet Business, when it picks up special ammo, reloads the magazine, and instead just fully give it overflow, which allows the ammo capacity to go even higher, which theoretically allows for, you know, better ad clear and damage and so forth. But if we want to make it a little bit more fancy, we could maybe go the direction of allowing it to have target lock. Frankly, that sounds terrifying, and I'm sure that's terrifying to Bungie as well, but at least according to the research that I've done, target lock is based off of the ammo capacity of the weapon, so maybe it might not be that strong. Actia War Rig users rejoice. Sturm and Drang. This is definitely one of the weaker ones on this list for sure, almost did not include it in lieu of a couple other options. Sturm is incredibly strong as it's capable with the Drang overcharge shot combo to deal, I believe it's 160 or 140 to the dome ski in PVP, which is insanely strong for a primary ammo weapon. However, in order to make Sturm work to its full capacity, it does reload your equipped energy weapon. You have to use Drang and a Drang is a very good weapon but it feels very limited. And short of being able to dual wield these weapons, which would be super sick, I know that we're not getting that anytime soon, I think it would perhaps be more valuable to Sturm to allow any energy weapon to overflow the magazine, but make it to where if it's not Drang, it requires perhaps twice the amount of effort. So something like a scout rifle, or I don't even know, something like a special weapon, shotgun, fusion rifle, you take your pick. It's gonna actually require two kills to get the one overcharged shot but it at least allows you to use other weapons than just Drang. Symmetry, the only exotic arc scout rifle that we have, and especially being that it's having to compete with the likes of the Trinity Ghoul as well as Cloud Strike, it probably could use a little bit of love that hopefully doesn't push it over the edge. An idea that doesn't take the bait of just give it Amplify or Blinding or some other ARC 3.0 verb, which could be valuable, could be something as simple as allow it to maintain its rate of fire even in its revolutions mode, its projectile and explosion based mode, 
but only allow it to stay in that mode for the amount of stacks that you have per second. So for example, you would still fire it at your normal fire rate in that revolutions mode, but it would only last, let's say six seconds because you only had six stacks. It would make it more valuable as a general DPS type tool, but it would come in bursts and you could get amplified off of multi kills of which those explosions aren't bad at. Alternatively, you could just do something as simple as after you get a kill with the revolutions mode, it causes a blinding effect, which is I think equally valid. Colony. The colony is interesting. A lot of exotic heavy weapons are interesting. The colony had a place in the game during a time when exotic heavy weapons were kind of in flux and I don't think the colony has ever really had a meta in the PvE space. I was discussing a lot of these during a live stream as we were kind of throwing ideas back and forth and a suggestion that I saw, which was pretty fantastic, I wish I could find the comment itself, was to make colony into a strand weapon and then make the colony's explosions spawn a threadling which would immediately sink some synergy into it and obviously improve its overall damage. I think that this would really make a unique weapon that currently it's unique, it just doesn't have a niche that it really needs to fill. Most of the time, if you are trying to shoot targets from a long distance, you can do that just as well with a normal grenade launcher or switch to another exotic heavy weapon, which would probably be better for overall DPS. The ease of use is definitely there for the colony. It's certainly a unique weapon, but having just a bit more power and utility would really help this weapon out. Truth. Truth is a weapon that existed in D1 and it was a staple as an exotic heavy weapon choice. Nowadays, Truth feels like a legendary weapon. In fact, there are plenty and if not every single legendary rocket launcher that would do it better than Truth. It's tempting to say just give Truth suppression rounds, but with the fact that now the Two-Tailed Fox also suppresses targets and it's the Void suppression in particular, I feel like that would be riding the toes of the Two-Tailed Fox just a bit. So instead, I would suggest either A, allowing it to have full court, which would increase the amount of damage based on the distance, being that Truth Seeker is designed about being accurate. So staying really far in the back and launching these long curving shots could be pretty fun and rewarding or doing something a little bit more supportive, like whenever you do kill a target or deal damage with the truth, you get a void overshield, like a small chunk of void overshield, which would immediately increase its utility. Lord of Wolves. Boy, oh boy, how this weapon has been through the works. Lord of Wolves used to absolutely dominate PVP for a very long time and has more recently been tuned down to be much more reasonable. To be fair, I think Lord of Wolves is probably where it needs to be in PvP, but in PvE it feels just a bit shy and lacking a real use case, again, where there are better and more competitive options with a legendary weapon. The temptation is immediately to jump to giving it some type of Scorch or Ignition, but there are already a lot of weapons that do that, so I feel like going in the more supportive role, being that Wolves are supposed to run in a pack, could be more interesting. What if it was something more along the lines of whenever the Lord of Wolves gets kills, it will give you and all nearby allies either Cure, which is a burst of health or restoration for a short period of time, which would allow you to play into the Solar 3.0 verbs without doing a direct thing that we already have with something like the Sunshot or the Skyburner's Oath or the proposed or the leaked Tommy's Matchbook change that we got, which is Scorch and Ignitions in general. I think that would be pretty interesting for Lord of Wolves as well as being relatively thematic. Zero's Regime is sort of the auto rifle of auto rifles. It is the most standard and the most vanilla exotic auto rifle, I think that exists in the game, although I'm sure there's, you know, you could debate it either way. It's, it's another one of those D1 vets that got an update coming into D2, but has never really found its place. I definitely don't think the auto rifle is bad in PvP, but in PvE, there are just better options. If you're going for more damage, you could probably find more success with just a legendary auto. If you're looking for the healing, why not just use Crimson? The only reason you tend to use this thing is that if you need the healing, 
and there's some type of auto rifle type champion mod that you want to use with it. I think allowing the Soros to switch between its rapid fire, its spinning up mode, and its focused fire mode on the flick of a switch would immediately make this weapon feel more valuable to the user as currently you have to open up a menu which is slow and boring. It also would help tremendously if the different fire modes had a intrinsic anti-champion unique to either one of them. Maybe spinning up would do overload and the focused fire would be more like anti-barrier or something along those lines. Vigilance Wing. Vigilance Wing is an interesting one because by its very design, it's hard to design around. How do you design around a weapon, an exotic weapon, that is designed to help support you when you are losing, as this weapon is designed to give you benefits when nearby allies die, which is never something that you ever really want to see, because that means that you're not doing well, and you should probably be using a different exotic to begin with, rather than trying to cut your losses with the Vigilant Swing. It did recently get a mild change with it now having Ensemble rather than Full Auto, being that Full Auto is now a setting rather than it being a required mod to certain weapons or a slottable mod for certain weapons, especially in PvP. There are a lot more valuable and a lot more viable options in the Pulse Rifles category, especially in the Kinetic slot with things like Revision Zero. So what do we do? Frankly, I don't have a good option for this one. My first thought is to say that you get more super energy or perhaps something more along the lines of just getting more ability energy when you have nearby allies with you. But I feel like that starts to ride the toes of the bad juju or maybe even something like the Traveler's Chosen, which does something kind of similar. So I leave this as a bit of homework to the viewer at home. How do you make an exotic weapon designed around losing your teammates that makes sense to use rather than just, why don't I just equip an exotic that helps me not have my teammates die to begin with? But the last one that is on this list today, is the Cerberus. Cerberus is an extremely funny gun. It is uh, perhaps one of my most enjoyed guns purely for its flavor alone, but Cerberus is just okay. It's fun in PvP, it can work in PvP, it's definitely more along the lines of a long range SMG with its split barrels, and in PvE, it's okay at chewing through ads in close ranges, but there are a lot of better options still for those two in particular. I think the main reason for this thing kind of feeling like it's falling flat is that its exotic catalyst is, feels like, at least, like it's actively harmful to the weapon. Switching over to its alt fire mode does not feel like it does anything spectacular to the weapon. In fact, it severely hurts its range, which means that often, you're not really going to be using this. I can see some use cases in PvE, just because damage and breakpoints and so forth, but literally never use this in PvP. This is probably going to be my most outrageous suggestion. But what if we gave Cerberus's alt fire explosive rounds? Maybe even add Unstoppable to it. That would immediately fix its range issue. It would be funny. And lastly, it would be funny. <laughs> I don't, I honestly don't know what to do with Cerberus. It's, it's so unique, but man, could it use some love. But let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section down below. If you are the person that left this comment, you won the Chipotle burrito. If you do not claim your Chipotle burrito by either reaching out to me on Discord or leaving a comment to my pinned comment, I'm gonna give it to somebody else, so I guess the competition's still going on. Subscribe for your chance at Chipotle, maybe, I don't know. But anyway, bless your faces, deuces. Thank you.